This lift by Matthias Steiner is one of the greatest moments in Olympic history, and here's why. Matthias' wife Suzanne had died in a car crash less than a year prior to the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. At the Olympics, Steiner had come in fourth place after the snatch competition. This meant that the statistical likelihood of him winning the overall medal was already very low. He then would miss his opening attempt in the clean and jerk competition, knocking down the statistical likelihood of winning even lower. Steiner would then make a very impressive 248 kilo second attempt. However, the Russian lifter would make his third attempt at 250 kilos and have a demonstrable nine kilo lead over Steiner. Now here's where it gets crazy. Steiner had less than a minute to determine his final attempt. He had already locked in a bronze. He could have gone for a easier attempt at a silver, something that was closer to his range of his last made lift. Or he could take a 10 kilo jump and make an all time personal record to take gold. With all of these factors, a gold would be miraculous. And on that day, that miracle occurred. Matthias Steiner would stand atop the podium with a picture of his late wife, Suzanne. Later in an interview, he said, I just wanted to show the world that I didn't want to be standing up there alone. Okay, so you're invested now. You want to know a little bit more about uh, this, this story. And look, the reality is the big part is is the loss of his wife and the continuing to train and then winning against all odds. I've kind of, you know, given you the spoiler of why, but not many people, if any, really go through the weightlifting session, the, the session, the, the actual competition and seeing the other players, the other uh, competitors in the session with Matthias Steiner. The sport of Olympic weightlifting is really interesting and it's really fun to kind of understand what's going on behind the scenes. So what I'm going to do for you guys is take you through that journey and explain to you what's happening and what's at stake. There's a lot of history with these super heavy weight lifters and just in general in, in Olympic weightlifting, super heavyweights, uh, you know, they're kind of the pinnacle of the sport. Uh, we're seeing it more so with Lasha now, uh, but it is the heaviest weight lifted in this manner of all time. You know, the, these are the strongest guys. Yes, they're the heaviest, um, but this is this is this is really cool, especially this session. So we're just gonna go dive right into it. We're gonna start with Matthias's first snatch. But first, today's sponsor is Transparent Labs. Now, the two products I'm currently using are the 100% grass-fed whey. Uh, I am using this flavor, chocolate peanut butter. It's incredible. What I love about it is that it's five total ingredients, I think. Grass-fed whey, peanut flour, cocoa powder, natural chocolate flavor, sodium chloride, and stevia. Six total ingredients. Definitely the best way I've ever had. And then we have our pre-workout, which is lean as the pre-workout. I think the great thing about Transparent Labs is that it is informed sports certified. So if you compete in something where there is drug testing, you will know for sure that you will not be popped for anything that could sneak its way into a pre-workout or any supplement for that matter that happens sometimes. Oh, busted. <laughs> I take the whey before training, after training, and then a little bit more before bed. And then obviously I take the pre-workout before working out. Woo! And so far they've been great. So check out the link in the description and use code Zach at checkout. So there he is, the man of the hour. And I'm also sitting on my couch watching this because like you, this is where I consume my most of my YouTube. I usually have a meal of food in front of me, but I don't. This is his opening attempt, 198. Such a classic look, compression, short sleeve underneath the singlet with the long socks, Adidas. Something that you see with a lot of super heavyweights is like, it doesn't seem like they change speed too much. I'm gonna pause it really quickly. This man right here, Victor's Cerbatis, okay? This dude right here is super underrated. Super underrated. He was a juggernaut in European championships. So he won one, two, three, four, five European championships and then medaled in 
uh, four more after that. So he's nine medals in European championships, won the world championships in 2007, and then four additional medals. Olympic Games, he gets silver in this one, and then, uh, or sorry, in Athens, and then he gets bronze in this one. This is the guy that, like, this is, he was ranked in this one, he was ranked number one. Also goes on to become a politician. Again, the short sleeves under the singlet, I think is such a sick look with the long sleeve. This coach, by the way, still the Latvian head coach, very le legendary coach. Looks like he's gonna match with 198. Now I don't know the body weight in this, but back then, whoever had the lighter body weight would win out of the two similar weights. Didn't matter if they lifted before or after. So here we go. Very similar style to Steiner. Very similar style. Now there's one other player that we need to think about here. Matthias Steiner, Serbatis, and one other guy. Evgeny Shigashev. Again with the sick look. I think one of the greatest power cleans of all time was done by this man at a very light body weight. What a lot of people love about Chigashev is that he is, he's always been one of the lightest, if not the lightest super heavyweights. So the numbers he's hitting are at such a body weight that, that we just don't see. I wonder what his body weight at, was at this. If you guys know, co please comment. But that power clean in training at 220 kilos was just incredible. He's always just been like a weightlifter's weightlifter. That's, uh, you know, and, and he just never really got, like it never panned out for him. Um, but anyways, here we go. Evgeny Chigachev. Fuck, those shoes are incredible. This, oh, there's Klokov. And Klokov didn't compete because of an injury. Little wobbly. Ah, show his bottom position. Yeah, he had to fall back a little bit. Watch. See how he kind of falls back. He wants to sit forward. See how he falls back and he still maintains. So this is the other player. This is Udachin. Dumbest viewpoint in, in this sport. Lasha has ruined the sport for, for everyone. A 200 kilo snatch is nothing. I seen Lasha double 210 like it was a joke. We, we can't think of that as normal. So now the socks are incredible. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, those are the most coveted shoes on the planet and they always will be forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Beautiful. And again, I just can't emphasize enough, Lasha Talhadze. once Lasha retires, I don't, I, I don't see this like world where we're snatching constantly around 210 or higher existing. Yeah, Chigashev, look at this dude. I want to explain to you guys the magic of weightlifting. And it goes on what you just saw there, the Latvian head coach. What he's doing is writing in people's, his lifter's attempt. So what happens is, let's say you make a lift. You'll get an automatic increase of one kilo. Okay, That means you then have to come back there and determine your next weight that you want to lift. The thing is, you get to change that weight. So depending on what the guy who in front of you, what he hit, what you think the guy behind you is going to hit, you can move around. And that's what they're doing. The coaches just stand by the table. It's madness. And I'll tell you when it really starts to factor in, especially at this session. But I mean, this is like, if, if there was a way that you could understand how intense it gets at this goddamn table... It, it makes the sport so exciting. Look at that. We have Klokov coaching Chigashev. 205, big snatch. Big, big lift here. Looked way better than his opener. The, again, this is why this is important that I'm taking you through this. Chigashev was in impeccable shape. Never won anything. And this was the meat for him to, to be the guy. I mean, just look at the difference between him and Chigashev. Wow. 206 for the lead. Just one kilo better 
then Chigashev here. Call for 207. Going for the lead. Incredible. I'm telling you, like it wasn't just like Steiner, ha you know, it wasn't just the wife thing. This, this competition was crazy, bro. So this is a must make lift to secure bronze at least. Yeah! He's an incredible lifter. You can see there's not really any pace change once it goes up the hip. But you really have to create space to get under the bar. And the best way to do that is like to just get it off your hip hard, man. That's, that's really why Losh is incredible. He can get the bar moving off the floor hard and then he can boom. Now, Chiggy, top lift, 210 kilos. Absolutely. This is, that is one of the, I, I think it's one of the greatest lifts in Olympic history, <laughs> right there. That high of a lift, that kind of clutch, like he, everything, momentum was going his way. Steiner had a fine meat, 203 kilos, holy smokes, that's good. But like, bro, you can't have a fine meat in this scenario. Matthias Steiner is down seven kilos to a guy who is in a lighter body weight category. So look, there's the body weights right there. Chigashev is uh, 124. Okay, so he's obviously the lightest guy here, but this was what's important. This is what I was talking about before. Sir Bodies, all he has to do is match Steiner and he'll beat him, right? Because Sir Bodies is one kilo lighter than him. Evgeny Chigashev, okay? Three for three, winner of this thing. He's actually eight kilos, if you think about it, ahead of Steiner because of the body weight differential. So Steiner will have to hit an eight kilo lift uh, to make up for that, okay? Now, we go into the clean and jerk session understanding that the likelihood of Matthias Steiner winning this gold medal is very low. So we're going to start off with Chigashev here, and it looks like he's got 240 on the bar. The scream be before the jerk, bro. So Udachin is out pretty much. Now we have Cerbati's first lift at 242. Oh, beautiful clean. This change of speed is so good. Dude, this guy is in sick form. So now Steiner has 246 on the bar here, I think. Had to walk it out and now he's a little loopy, but it's not a good thing to miss your opening attempt in either the snatch or the clean and jerk, dude. Good. Wow. So here we have Steiner, 248. Even if he does make this, he'll still be six kilos back. If he made that opener, then he could be playing catch up. He could be jumping past Chigashev. Anyways, here's the lift. Much better clean here. Good, huge lift, massive. Such an underrated lift right there. Kept him in the, in the game. He jumped past Udachin, Udachin, the other two guys, and pretty much secured bronze. We now have Chigashev with 250 on the bar. Oh, that's a grindy one. Doesn't fuck around, one breath and goes. Huge. Huge. You need to understand. This was his meat. This man was supposed to win this thing. Six for six is so, is so rare. And to do it on the Olympic stage and to hit 460 kilos. Oh, I've got chills just thinking about it, guys. I'm not, like, I'm not kidding you. Look at that. Klokov just loving life. The boys are gonna get weird in Beijing tonight. That's at least what they're thinking, you know what I mean? Sir Bodies then goes and, and tries to take gold from the man of the hour. 
uh, and he needs 257, which is a huge jump for him. Now we have one lift left, and we know who that man is. Matthias Steiner is approached by his coach, and his coach says this. The ganz großen Athleten zeichnet eines aus. Sie haben viele Wettkämpfe, nur ganz wenige Wettkämpfe, wo es dann nur einen einzigen Versuch gibt, der über alles entscheidet und der das Leben auch verändern kann. In deinem Leben hast du vielleicht zwei, drei Versuche, vielleicht auch nur einen. He makes that decision to now take a leap of faith. To be a man who has had a pretty decent session, you know, that 248 was very good, that 203 was very good, right? A pretty decent session, and now has to lift a miraculous lift. Over a guy who went six for six, which is incredibly rare, and had the meat of his lifetime. He did everything right. Everything right. Steiner didn't do everything right. Barely any height on that clean. Best jerk yet. Got it behind him. Probably Everything comes crashing down. That reaction right there. That, I mean, that's, that's a guy saying, I did everything I could. Everything I could. I did everything right, coach. Bro, this is, this is what the Olympics are about right here, man. 461 total. That's no slouch right there. That's legit. So now we have one of the most iconic more moments in sports history, obviously Olympic history. Look at Chigashev doesn't really realize like how special the moment that is. He just comes up and does like a little flex thing. But that's it. That's what that's about. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that, you know, variation on a story that we all know about. And if you didn't know about it, now you do. Um, I like to share the ins and outs of Olympic weightlifting as somebody who's coached and competed in it quite extensively. Um, I think it's incredibly interesting. And for me, you know, obviously the aspect of him losing his wife and then dedicating the, the victory to her and bringing her on, bringing the picture on stage uh, is, is incredibly important. And it's, it's the most important part of the thing. But I think, you know, a very, very big part of this was the performance and that the performance wasn't perfect. And it, it really does play out like some of the best narrative structure for a movie I think I've ever seen. Like he is gonna lose. He's gonna lose this thing and needs a miracle and does the miracle. Like mathematically, statistically, he needs a miracle. That's what's, that's what's so intriguing to me. Most people don't know about that. And I wanted to bring that to you. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.